Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, continuing our discussion about language elements. Today we will look at how to write effective sentences. First aspect under you know constructing effective sentences is bringing in variety. So what does this mean? So um, we know that sentences can be broadly classified into three kinds simple sentence compound sentence and complex sentence so when you are writing a longish essay a write up you need to make sure that you bring in variety in kinds of sentences so it means you bring in variety in sentence length this is very important not to sound monotonous and also to convey your um, idea uh, in a very effective manner. So, let us look at more um, uh, into these aspects. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you, if you use only simple sentences or if you, you know, uh, you have simple sentences, but you combine them using linkers like and and but uh, very often that becomes a monotonous style. So, um, you need to bring in variety. Let us look at each of these kinds of uh, sentences. First, simple sentence. So, simple it is called simple because it has only one independent clause and there are no dependent clauses, but note here there may be any number of phrases. So, let us look at this example, fresh water boils at 100 degree Celsius at sea level. So, we say this has only one independent clause because there is only one verb, you know independent verb and it is in um, simple present. So, it is not a participial we have seen earlier. So, uh, it is a you can say a proper verb with a tense feature. So, this is um, an independent clause if you look at it there is no other um, verb. So, this has only one independent clause. However, there are many phrases. So, for example, at 100 degrees Celsius. So, this is one phrase at sea level is another phrase, but um, sentence is only one independent clause. So, this is a simple sentence. Next compound sentence. The second type is compound sentence. So, what happens in a compound sentence is you have two or more than two independent clauses combined using you know uh, uh, some sort of linker. So, um, key thing is uh, there are independent clauses and there must be at least two or more than that. So, let us look at examples. Salt water boils at a higher temperature than fresh water. So, food cooks faster in salt water. So, you know there is one clause here, there is another clause here. Uh, the linker is so. So, look at next example, salt water boils at a higher temperature than fresh water. Therefore, food cooks faster in salt water. So, you look at the difference here, punctuation and um, linkers are also different. Salt water boils at a higher temperature than fresh water, food cooks faster in salt water, sometimes just a punctuation mark 
it is enough to indicate the relationship. This we will see when we look at punctuation in detail. So, uh, in all these cases as you can see there are two independent clauses and they are joined using linker or sometimes a punctuation mark. The third type is you know, called complex sentence. So, what happens in a complex sentence is there is at least one independent clause and at least one dependent clause. Uh, dependent clause may be more than one in number. So, now we have seen that an independent clause has a verb, it is you know uh, it has a perfect tense. I mean in the sense uh, it is uh, simple present, present continuous any of these kinds and it stands alone. It conveys complete meaning. Dependent clause on the other hand will not have a tensed verb. Um, instead you may find a participial or infinitive uh, kind of uh, uh, verb and these do not convey complete sense. They depend on the independent clause to convey the complete meaning. Let us look at an example. Although women in the United States could own property, they could not vote until 1920. So, um, there are two verbs here. So, could own and could not vote. So, there are two clauses here. So, if you look at the first one, although women in the United States could own property, so this is dependent clause, this is not complete, this does not convey complete sense. So, if somebody uh, you know says this and stops, then naturally we will ask, so what is next, so what? Um, so, they could not vote until 1920, it is the independent clause. So, um, when you have such a you know relationship one independent clause and one independent clause. So, one clause most often independent clause has more importance than dependent clause. Let us look at some more examples. Men who are not married are called bachelors. So, who are not married, so this is one clause. Men are called bachelors, so this is another clause. This you know is actually modifying this um, subject here. That there is a hole in the ozone layer of earth's atmosphere is well known. So, here there is a hole in the ozone layer of earth's atmosphere. So, from here till here is one clause is well known is another clause. So, from here till here it is dependent clause is well known is you know independent clause. I just wanted him to go away. So, here to go away is dependent clause. I just wanted um, you know is um, actually independent clause. So, dependent clauses can be you know, of different kinds as here it is an infinitive clause you know here it is um, a kind of a relative clause which modifies the noun phrase. Here this is a that clause which is in the subject position and here this starts with a conjunction. So, uh, but all these are um, instances of complex sentence. So, I mentioned in the beginning that you need to you know bring in variety, you need to you know use simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences. So, if you do not, so what happens? Let us look at uh, you know uh, an example. We are going to look at three versions um, you know about the same topic. Uh, Let us read each of these in detail and then see which one is um, the most um, appropriate. Version 1. Rosa Parks is a famous African American woman. She is often called the mother of the civil rights movement. 
She was born into a poor but hard working African American family in Alabama. No one suspected that she would become the spark that ignited the civil rights movement in the United States. This movement changed the US society forever. It helped African Americans attain equal rights under the law. So, this is version 1. This is version 2. Rosa Parks is a famous African American woman and she is often called the mother of the civil rights movement. She was born into a poor but hard working African American family in Alabama and no one suspected that she would become the spark that ignited the civil rights movement in the United States. This movement changed the US society forever and it helped African Americans attain equal rights under the law. Now, version 3. Rosa Parks is a famous African American woman who is often called the mother of the civil rights movement. When she was born into a poor but hard working African American family in Alabama, no one suspected that she would become the spark that ignited the civil rights movement in the United States. This movement changed the US society forever by helping African Americans attain equal rights under the law. So, now let us go back to version 1. So, as you can see most of the sentences are here simple sentences. For example, Rosa Parks is a famous African American woman. So, this is a simple sentence. She is often called the mother of the civil rights movement. So, this is simple sentence. Um, this is again a simple sentence. Um, this movement changed the US society forever. This is a simple sentence. This is also a simple sentence. So, as a result, you know, the connection is not shown properly and whatever you know you want to highlight that aspect is not highlighted. These are all standalone um, simple sentences. So, there is a problem here in uh, version 1. Now, let us look at version 2. So, uh, Rosa Parks is a famous African American woman and she is often called the mother of the civil rights movement. So, if you compare this with the previous one, so there are two sentences here and they are combined using the linker and here. Rosa Parks is a famous African American woman and she is often called the mother of the civil rights movement. So, two simple sentences are combined using the linker and. So, you may ask, so what is wrong with this? There is nothing wrong. This is grammatically acceptable. You have combined two simple sentences. So, you have brought in some variety, fine. But um, if you uh, look at the rest of the paragraph, you see that there is a problem. The problem is, you know, repeated use of the linker and to combine simple sentences into compound sentences. So, let us look at it. She was born into a poor but hard working African American family in Alabama and so, let us see how many times the word and has been used. No one suspected that she would become the spark that ignited the civil rights movement in the United States. This movement changed the US society forever and it helped African Americans attain equal rights under the law. So, here is just like you know you have got simple sentences and then you have used the linker and and combined. Using it once is fine, but using it again and again when you have other linkers, when you can clearly show relationship between these sentences. Uh, overuse of and uh, does not you know 
make your writing very effective. Uh, actually, readers you know will form a poor impression. They might think your language skills are limited. You do not know how to write effectively. So, you need to uh, understand the connection you know, between sentences and use the most appropriate linker. So, now let us look at version 3. Rosa Parks is a famous African American woman. So, this sentence you know remains same as in here and here. So, the first sentence is same, but you see a difference here. So, the second sentence which is here, she is often called the mother of the civil rights movement. It has been here converted into a relative clause here. So, who is often called the mother of the civil rights movement? So, you have brought in a variety. Okay. Now, I am going back to this. So, this is the second bit of uh, piece of information. She was born into a poor but hard working African American family in Alabama. No one suspected that she would become the spark that ignited the civil rights movement in the United States. So, there is some sort of connection. She was born into a very ordinary family and therefore, nobody you know suspected that she would become a great personality later on. When you have two simple sentences like this, so that is not clearly shown. And here you have used the most common linker and here again it does not clearly show. Now, look at this. So, you have started the sentence with when. When she was born into a poor but hard working African American family in Alabama. So, you have converted this into a dependent clause. No one suspected that she would become the spark that ignited the civil rights movement in the United States. So, now the connection between these two sentences is clearer. Okay. Look at the last part. This movement changed the US society forever. So, this is here, change the US society forever. So, the sentence is retained, but see you have there is this sentence, it helped African Americans attain equal rights under the law. So, this you have converted into a kind of dependent clause. So, by helping African Americans attain equal rights under the law. So, um, as a result you see there is a variety in sentences and this version definitely you know looks um, the most appropriate out of the three versions which we saw. So, um, in order to write effective paragraphs and in order to ultimately uh, you know uh, produce a good write up you bring in variety in your sentences. So, um, you can use almost any combination of dependent and independent clauses, but uh, this is we need to be very sure there is at least one independent clause. So, if you do not have independent clause, your sentence is incomplete. So, we have to be very careful about it. Look at an example. I wanted to travel after I graduated from college. However, I had to go to work immediately. So, here you can see I wanted to travel. I wanted is you can say independent clause to travel after I graduated from college. The whole thing is now uh, you know infinitive clause. Within that you have another clause here after I graduated from college. So, you have uh, multiple uh, dependent 
clauses. However, you have used the linker. I had to go to work immediately. So, so this is here infinitive clause. So, there is another dependent clause here. So, you can uh, bring in multiple dependent clauses, but you have to make sure that there is uh, at least one independent clause. For example, in this case, if you simply say after I graduated from college, then you know it is uh, incomplete because it is only a dependent clause after I graduated from college. So, then what? So, that is the question. So, you need um, at least one independent clause to make it grammatical and appropriate. Okay. So, uh, that was you know one of the aspects of writing effective sentences. The next you know is avoiding choppy sentences. So, what is a choppy sentence? You can see here choppy sentences are sentences that are too short. Um, so, does it mean you should never uh, write short sentences? Uh, that is not the case. Of course, in some contexts, uh, short sentences can be very effective. Let us look at an example here. Despite countless doctors' warnings, news stories, and magazine articles about the importance of eating a nutritious, balanced diet, many people resist developing healthy eating habits. Some people just like junk food. So, here is a short sentence, but you can see in this context, it is very effective. It you know, uh, uh, talks about a very contrasting situation. The first part of this you know is a lengthy sentence. So, you know you are talking about many people resisting developing healthy eating habits and then you are making a very strong statement. So, this short sentence here is very effective, but uh, if you have too many such short sentences then there is a problem. Note uh, they are not grammatically incorrect, but they just do not sound good. Uh, let us look at an example. So, look at this paragraph, wind is an enduring source of power, water is also an unlimited energy source, dams produce hydraulic power, they have existed for a long time, windmills are relatively new. So, there are how many sentences here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all are very short sentences. So, this is a case of a poor style. So, this you know we call choppy constructions. Uh, you can see you know uh, bring in variety use uh, compound sentences, complex sentences, uh, use different kinds of clauses um, you know to make it more lively. So, uh, how do you uh, you know address this problem? So, if you have a choppy sentence, so how can you know, change it? So, one if sentences express equal ideas you know you can turn it into a compound sentence. So, uh, recall earlier we noted that in a compound sentence most often one idea is more important than the other. So, that more important idea is expressed in dependent clause and the less important idea or something which modifies the independent clause is expressed in dependent clause. So, if you have two ideas and if you think they are of equal importance, then you can use a compound sentence. It means you use two independent clauses. So, in a compound sentence, the connector you use is very important. 
in, uh, in an example, we saw that if you overuse any particular linker, for example, like and, it does not look good. So, you need to use a very uh, appropriate linker. I have listed some examples here. So, if you have similar or equal ideas, you can use and either or something like this. So, you say we can either go to movie or um, you know sit at home. So, we go to movie, sit at home. So, there are two equal options. So, you use either. Negative equal idea means you know you do not like both, you do not want to do both, something like that. So, you can say I do not want neither a new car, you know, nor a new bicycle. So, you do not want both. So, equal ideas. If you are contrasting, you can use but. So, you might have uh, you know, uh, uh, come across uh, this sentence in stories, he was poor, but he was honest. So, you are contrasting you are you know uh, focusing on alternatives. So, you can use or say you can say we can go to movie x or movie y. If one idea is more important than the other, you know you can um, convert those short simple sentences into complex sentence. So, some linkers you can use are listed here. So, you are you know um, uh, planning to give some information about the time. So, some linkers you can use are when, after, as soon as and so on. So, we saw in that example, when Rosa Parks was born, people did not know that she would go on to become a great personality. So, here you are talking about the time. So, you have used when. So, after I graduated from uh, college, I joined an MNC. So, you are again talking about time. Reason, we use linkers like because, since, as, say you say since uh, she was ill, uh, she did not come to class. So, you are giving reason. Contrast, we use although, whereas, so, we say although he was you know 18 years old, he did not have a driving license. So, you expect that a person is 18 years old, the person may have you know driving license. So, here you want to uh, you know contrast two ideas. Descriptive, so you know you give more information about the subject or the object, then you know like who, which, that and so on. So, you say you know um, the man who I met on a um, train journey had come to meet me. So, who I had met on a train journey, this part you know gives more information about your subject that is the man. So, uh, you can use such linkers. Now, here are some sentences. Let us read these and let us combine them. So, um, note here um, more than one option is often available. Let us look at these sentences. Gasoline became expensive. Automobile manufacturers began to produce smaller cars. Smaller cars use less gasoline. So, there are three um, sentences. Now, the connection among these is not clear. So, when you look at these very carefully, you see that there is a very clear connection. So, for example, gasoline became expensive, automobile manufacturers began to produce smaller cars. Probably, you know, this is cause effect relationship. Because gasoline became expensive, 
automobile manufacturers began to produce smaller cars. So, now you see that that connection is clear. Smaller cars use less gasoline. This is probably you know this is explaining why smaller cars. So, this is giving you know reason for it. So, you can say um, gasoline when gasoline became expensive automobile manufacturers began to produce smaller cars because smaller cars use less gasoline. So, now you have combined all three. Let us look at second one. Electric cars are powered solely by batteries. The new hybrid vehicles switch between electricity and gasoline. So, here now we are talking about two different ideas. Say you are here kind of comparing electric cars and hybrid vehicles. So, here you can you know convert it into a compound sentence and um, you can use a contrasting linker. So, you can say electric cars are powered solely by batteries, but the new hybrid vehicles switch between electricity and gasoline. Look at the last one. The voting system in our country should be abolished. The citizens do not like casting their vote. The politicians do not encourage honest voters. So, this is the statement and A is the statement, B and C are reasons for it. So, these two are you can say parallel ideas and these two are actually you know uh, reasons for this. So, you can say the voting system in our country should be abolished because the citizens do not like casting their vote and the politicians do not encourage honest voters. So, this is how you know instead of uh, writing choppy sentences. So, uh, one it is a poor style, second it clearly does not show the links. So, you convert them into compound or complex sentences. The next aspect is parallelism. So, what is it? So, when you are listing ideas or you are talking about similar uh, you know uh, items, you are comparing contrasting, then the idea is that you use very similar structures. So, similar ideas, similar structures. So, that makes your writing more effective. For example, if you are writing a list and the first item in your list is a noun, then all the other you know are nouns. If the first item is an ing word, then all the others are ing words. If the first one is an adverb clause, then all are adverb clauses. If the first one is infinitive clause, then others are also infinitive clauses. So, now let us look at some examples. So, if you look at this table, so this left column, you see sentences which are not no parallel and here you see constructions which are parallel. My English conversation class is made up of Chinese, Spaniards and some are from Bosnia. So, the problem here is so Chinese, Spaniards these are single words nouns and suddenly you have got a complete clause. So, change the last part. See here, my English conversation class is made up of Chinese, Spaniards and Bosnians. So, you have converted this part into single noun. Look at the second example. The students who do well attend class, they do their homework and practice speaking in English. So, see here the students who do well attend class, 
practice speaking in English, but in between you have got a this word they. So, this, this has become a complete sentence. So, drop it. So, say the students who do well attend class. So, starts with verb, do their homework, verb, practice speaking English. So, three uh, ideas and all start with the verb. Let us look at some more examples. The teacher wanted to know which country we came from and our future goals. So, you see here which wanted to know which country we came from, but here this is this is a clause our future goals this is a phrase. So, a parallel wh word is missing. So, change it the teacher wanted to know which country we came from and what our future goals were. So, it starts with a wh word this also starts with a wh word. Let us look at one more example the language skills of the students in the evening classes are the same as the day classes. Here the problem is so you know language skills of the students in the evening classes are the same as the day classes. So, the problem here is you are comparing language skills of the students in the evening classes with day classes. So, something is missing here. So, see the language skills of the students in the evening classes are the same as those of the students in the day classes. So, now you are clearly comparing. See, you cannot compare people with an object. So, here you are comparing language skills of students in the evening class this is on one hand. So, on the other you need to have language skills of students in the day classes. So, this is one of the common mistakes while you know writing parallel constructions. So, you need to be careful about it. So, um, this sentence as I mentioned um, is problematic. So, when you are comparing uh, you need to compare uh, uh, you know things from the same uh, lot. So, skills, skills, people, people otherwise it would not become a parallel construction. This is actually you know grammatically inappropriate. So, this indicates that this sentence has problem. So, in parallel construction sometimes you will see that some parts uh, a phrase may be dropped because it is a parallel construction and you know you can infer it from the context. So, some examples are here the federal air pollution control administration regulates automobile exhaust and the federal aviation administration the aircraft. So, here you mean this regulates automobile exhaust and this regulates the aircraft exhaust. So, regulates and exhaust these are actually kind of you know uh, dropped here, but you can infer it from the context. Look at one more example. The states regulate the noise created by motor vehicles, but not by commercial aircraft. So, you mean to say, but not the noise created by commercial aircraft. So, in you do not need to repeat it, uh, you, if, even if you drop it, you can infer it from the context. There are some more examples. A new law provides the means for both regulating pesticides and ordering their removal if they are dangerous. So, means for regulating pesticides means for ordering their removal. Air pollutants may come from either the ocean as natural contaminants given off by sea life 
or the internal combustion engines of automobiles. So, you can see here may come from, so you have used either or here. So, come from the ocean and this is you know additional information here or internal combustion you know engines of automobiles. If neither industry nor the public works toward reducing pollution problems, future generations will suffer. So, industry does not work, public does not work. Yeah. So, we have seen some either or neither nor constructions. Let us look at some more examples. We can either slow down aging or cure cancer we cannot mathematically do both. So, you can see after either you have used a word phrase slow down aging. So, after or also the structure has to be very similar. So, cure cancer. So, this is also a word phrase. So, there is um, actually uh, similarity slow down aging cure cancer. So, both are word phrases here. We can either ask for an extension or submit the assignment today itself. So, here again either ask for an extension. So, ask for an extension here you have a verb phrase or submit the assignment today itself. So, this is again a verb phrase. They have not got neither the parcel nor a confirmation. So, here you have noun phrases. So, after neither the parcel there is one noun phrase. So, after nor also has to be a noun phrase. So, you see they have not got neither the parcel nor a confirmation. If you replace the word neither then the sentence becomes problematic. Say if you say they neither have not got the parcel nor a confirmation. So, you move neither from here and put it here, it is problem or you put it here, they have not neither got the parcel nor a confirmation, this again is a problem. So, after neither nor or either or what you use should be parallel. So, you have a verb phrase, then have a verb phrase, you have a noun then here also you have a noun. Now, let us correct these sentences. Credit cards are accepted by department stores, airlines and they can be used in some gas stations. So, we said uh, you are listing items. So, go for parallel construction, but there is a problem here. So, you can see that. Um, accepted by department stores, airlines. So, these are all noun phrases and they can be used in some gas station. So, but instead of a noun phrase here you have got a complete clause. So, change it credit cards are accepted by department stores, airlines and some gas stations. So, then it becomes a parallel construction. You do not need to risk carrying cash or to risk to miss a sale. So, see here you do not need to risk after risk carrying cash. So, this is a ing phrase, but after this here you have used infinitive clause. So, you can change it you do not need to risk carrying cash or even you can drop this risk missing a sale. So, you drop this also. So, risk carrying cash, risk missing a sale. So, now it becomes parallel. With credit cards you can either pay your bill in one installment you may also convert it into easy EMIs. So, here you can see there is a problem. You have used either, but you have not used or. So, after either 
pay your bill in one installment. So, this is a verb phrase. So, bring in or and then say convert it into easy EMIs. So, you can either pay your bill in one installment or convert it into easy EMIs. The next aspect you now is called sentence fragments. They are you know incomplete sentences. So, remember uh, we noted earlier that if you are planning to have a complex sentence, um, you need to have at least one independent clause. One of the com most common mistakes is you start with a dependent clause, you end there, you do not have an independent clause. So, let us look at some examples. Because some students work part time while taking a full load of classes. So, this is a dependent clause, you have started with a linker. So, this is incomplete information. So, you naturally expect something to come here. So, um, this is you know a sentence fragment. So, how do you change it? So, one solution you add an independent clause because some students work part time while taking a full load of courses, they have very little free time. So, this is an independent clause. So, now this is complete or you delete this subordinating conjunction because. So, you simply say some students work part time while taking a full load of classes. But note here the difference between this sentence and this. Here you have some more information and now the first part you know supplies some additional details. But here you have only one um, simple sentence. So, you all need to check your sentences very carefully and particularly when you are starting your sentence with a subordinating conjunction um, like when or because or since. So, if you start you know then you need to make sure that you complete it, you have an independent clause um, there. Let us look at some more examples. The desire of all humankind to live in peace and freedom for example. So, this you know is actually a phrase, you are giving an example. This is you know this part is fairly long, but technically it is not a sentence. The desire of all humankind to live in peace and freedom, so there is no verb proper tense. So, this is not a clause. So, this is a fragment. So, if you put a full stop, this is inappropriate. Second, a fact that men are physically stronger than women. So, here again, so that men are physically stronger than women, you know, is subordinate clause. You need something here to complete. Uh, so, uh, for example, a fact that men are physically stronger than women you know, has been exaggerated. So, then it becomes complete. The best movie I saw last year. So, you have a verb here, but you know this is a part of you know um, dependent clause. So, this is fine as the title, but you, you know you need to have something else. So, something like uh, this is the best movie I saw last year. Titanic, the most financially successful movie ever made worldwide. So, this again you know is uh, not complete, this is a fragment. So, you have to say Titanic is the most financially successful movie ever made worldwide. 
So, you need a verb with tense uh, to make it an independent clause. Moving on, another issue with sentences could be, you know, you have a run on sentence. So, some example we have already seen. So, a run on sentence means you have two or more independent clauses written one after another with no punctuation and sometimes you, you have used a conjunction to just you know, combine these. Look at this. My family went to Australia, then they immigrated to Canada. So, there are two sentences here, but in between there is no punctuation, you have not split. Another problem is, it is called comma spli splice, it is related to it. So, two independent clauses incorrectly joined by a comma uh, without a coordinating conjunction. Look at this example. My family went to Australia and then you have put a comma, then they emigrated to Canada. So, this is you know wrong use of comma and it's, this is called comma splice. So, in both the cases you have the problem of uh, run on sentences. So, what are the solutions? How can you you know uh, overcome this problem? So, simple thing you add a full stop. So, my family went to Australia full stop, then they immigrated to Canada. You can also use a semicolon. We use semicolon when you know you have two sentences and there is a very close connection between uh, the two sentences. So, you do not want to use uh, full stop. Look at this. My family went to Australia, then they emigrated to Canada. You can use a coordinating conjunction. My family went to Australia and then they emigrated to Canada. But note, you know, if you if you repeatedly use coordinating conjunction and you just go on combining simple sentences, then that is also not a good style. You can, uh, you know, use a subordinating conjunction. So, here your sentence also undergoes change. My family went to Australia before they emigrated to Canada. So, before they emigrated to Canada, here you can see you know, his dependent clause. Um, you have used uh, a subordinating conjunction before. After my family went to Australia, they emigrated to Canada. So, here it comes in the beginning itself, the dependent clause. After here is the subordinating conjunction. So, you uh, you know use uh, proper conjunction or proper punctuation marks, um, you, you know um, uh, do not continue uh, uh, combining sentences with and. So, that is how we can avoid the problem of uh, uh, run on uh, sentences. So, uh, summing up today, we looked at how we can form effective sentences. So, grammatically correct sentences, yes, that is one aspect, but it is not just enough to be grammatically accurate. You also have to take care of you know your style. So, if you say for example, have too many short sentences, then it is a poor style. You need to bring in variety in sentences. So, that was the first aspect we looked at. And then we looked at parallel constructions. So, you have uh, parallel ideas, they need to be expressed in parallel constructions. So, uh, do not bring in different kinds of structures when you are dealing with parallel ideas. Then 
we looked at uh, choppy sentences means you have sh very short sentences. So, instead of that bring in conjunctions, combine them, show connections across sentences in a, a better manner. Then we had you know uh, problems of uh, non sentences. So, you have just you know uh, this is you know something like your spoken language. You just go on and on combining sentences sometimes uh, without a punctuation mark or you use a comma uh, in a wrong place. So, you need to um, you know keep in mind that um, you need to use appropriate uh, linkers and uh, uh, avoid the problem of uh, run on sentences. Thank you.